Welcome back to the channel, y'all. It is time to get some meat in the cooler. And we are amongst a lake that has uh, quite a few white bass and stripers. I want to catch me some and get them in the cooler. Let's go. Right now, pretty much all species on the lake are figuring out where they're going to go spawning. Some are actually in the spawning attempts and uh, this, lake, this lake has had some rain here and what white bass and striper species need is they need current to spawn so they will look for uh, any type of little creeks pockets that have some current and they'll congregate together and as soon as I find them in a group I'm gonna probably do a little bit of uh, crankbait casting with a mini recon I've got a jerk bait I've got uh, some spoons to dangle I've got everything I need. So, so far on this trip since I've been out here, I have caught an eight to nine pound striper. Obviously that one's a keeper, but I didn't keep it. We were just, uh, we were kind of bass fishing at the time. But I never found any white bass until today. So I'm hoping to just whack them and stack them. Got him on the recon. A little mini. What are you gonna be? Ooh, that's a nice oh that's a nice white bass. There we go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Yes, sir. Look at that chunky dog right there. Woohoo! That's what we're looking for. Man, that was a beast. That is gonna eat good, ladies and gentlemen. All right, get that out. So we're dealing with a mix of stripers and white bass in this lake, and the white bass, they are more of a broader body. They don't get nearly as big. That's a good, good size one right there. Okay. A striper is much longer, and they get huge. They can get up to like 40 pounds. When you throw out there and you feel those fish hitting it, you just want to pause it, let give them a chance to just inhale it. That one got it right there. It's a little striper though. He is not gonna make the cut. That is not 18 inches. Wow. Gosh, these guys are so much stronger. So much stronger than a white bass. It's insane. Okay. Alright. You're probably gonna catch a lot of those. But they're all in here feeding and trying to spawn. Oh, they're busting right there. They're busting. I just got hit like five times right there. Oh gosh. One just was about to grab it. Oh, got him right there by the boat. Ah. There's a white bass. I think. Nope, that's gonna be a striper. And that's a little healthier one there. God, these things are scary to grab, y'all. Let's see if I can get down there and catch one of those big ones. Oh, I got one on. <laughs> Jeez. Got him on the spoon as soon as it went down there. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's a striper way in the back. Yeah, come on up here, son. Come on up here. Yeah, I know. I know you're not happy about it. I'm not happy about it either. I want to get you off of this hut because I don't feel very safe. Okay, see you later. Now, there are some fishes that are just down here right at the end. Oh, got him. Hit it on the paws. What are you gonna be? Striper or the white bass? It's coming right at me. Looks like a white bass. 
Yes, sir. There we go. That is going to be close to keeper, but we're going to check. Got to be 10 inches to keep. And uh, that one is just legal. Tail is over. It's hard to say where exactly the, the striped bass and the white bass start and end. They're all just kind of blending in here. I'm just casting and I'm going to have to weed through. Uh, if I get a huge striper or a keeper striper, that would be awesome. But I think they're typically a little deeper. Okay, I don't really want to tear up my jerk bait, but I'm going to throw this for a minute because I'm seeing some big marks on this point. And I could get lucky and get the big striper. Yep, this might be a good one here. This might be a better one here. Or it's a bass. It seems to be staying down. Or it could just be a two pound striper because they are just <laughs> absolute savages. But he's taking drag now. Oh yeah, there we go, baby. Taking the drags. Oh my gosh. I think it's gonna be a striper, he's just staying down. Oh yeah, it's a good one. This might be, woo, this might be a keeper right here. Shoo, baby. Okay, I've got 10 pound test right here, y'all. So the odds of <laughs> getting this fish in without a net, I'm gonna have to use a net. It's, it's just going. Oh yeah, this might be a keeper. This might be a keeper. This is one of those I was seeing the marks. Come here. It's not a giant, but it's pretty good. If I can figure out how to use my net, I'll be okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is a hybrid. This is actually a hybrid right here. Oh, it's a big one. Come here, baby. Cannot get you without the nets. You were too large. There we go. Yeah, Lee, y'all. This thing is a freaking tank. It's a freaking tank. Holy cow. Holy cow. This is the exact mix of a striper and a white bass. So get this thing out holy cow y'all this is a freaking fatty oh no 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 ah this is how you break hooks off a of jerk bait okay god lee look at that butterball sally right there y'all holy cow all right i'm gonna stick it in the live hole just a second okay so if y'all live in texas you should download this app this is the uh the outdoor annual and it'll show you for hunting regulations fishing regulations is, it's really nice but anyway statewide regulations for striper and hybrids it's 18 inches except for lake texoma they have a different one and you can keep five in any combination so that's one i'm pretty sure it's over 18 inches where we're going to measure it just to make sure yeah that's it so outdoor annual it's basically like having the booklet that you would get at sporting goods stores on your phone so it really helps we're just gonna make sure oh. and that is over 18 so mouth is touching and the tail is over 18 inches just over 18 it's 18 and a quarter i thought it would have been 19 but it's over that was awesome y'all if y'all have never felt the fight of a 
good size hybrid or striper, it is intense. And that was on 10 pound line on a jerk bait on the scout. So I think I'm gonna make some more casts out here on this point. This is kind of like the, the lead in area for them to go spawn. And it's, it's similar to the bass right now. Honestly, with that big hybrid, I don't really need to catch that many more fish because that thing makes up for like five or six white bass in itself. It's so chunky and thing's gonna be delicious. We'll get to the cooking portion of this here in a minute, but right now let's have some more fun catching fish. Oh, hooked up, hooked up on a freaking drum, baby. Oh yeah, okay. Oh my God. God, I thought you were the one. That is a big, ugly drum. Hi, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let you go, buddy. Get out of here. Your big, ugly face. I'll eat one of those one day, but it's not gonna be today. Made a little switcheroo to El Grande Recon. And I just landed a monster drum. Okay, I moved to the other side of this little hole where I just had the big hybrid. I'm gonna try to get me a few more. They're just roaming around here. Oh, there's one. Got him, got him. Uh, what, are you, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? Oh, stripies, stripies. Yeah, that's a stripe one. And again, you can see the elongated body and their stripes are perfectly clean. There's no broken up stripes. That, that's a true striper right there. So those, those and the hybrids have to be 18 inches long to keep. Oh, it's probably gonna be a striper though. He's just going vicious mode. No, it's a white bass. Yeah, no, it is a striper, him. He's just so fat. Come here, buddy. That's gonna be that striper again. God, he got me. Okay. Get the old big crank out here. Oh gosh, got one right away. That's gotta be a striper. We well, got some horsepower on this rod and reel though. I can handle him. There you got off. Jeez. I've been getting just absolutely cracked by those little striper, but I can't keep them. So I reckon I'm gonna head in now with my big old hybrid and two white bass, put them in the grease. I wanna see how these hybrids taste. All right, y'all, we are back from the lake and it is getting about dinner time here at the tree house. This is actually 24 hours later. I always like to let my fish sit on ice uh, overnight before I even clean them. I just feel like it firms the meat up. It just, it's better. I feel like it's better. I do have some disappointing news though. Cameraman Bryant at, uh, at Guggen Squad, one of our, one of our lead camera personnels, he, uh, well, he was, he was backing in my truck and boat into the cabin there and, uh, well, made a, made a big boo-boo and, uh, pretty much made a big old dent scratch uh paint removing situation on a pole there at the cabin needless to say i wasn't happy but there's not much you can do about it y'all make it like a duck feather with the water coming over the back just just let it roll off because things in life happen uh that actually happened like one of the first days we were there and the fishing was really good and we all had a really good time and we all forgot about it so it's it's not a big deal what it is now time for is to clean our fish. So I'm going to go standard fillet knife since I've only got three. I usually keep these types of things in my truck. And uh, actually, I think it's in here in my money bag. So this is kind of like my um, camping tools, uh, necessities. I keep my, um, you know, camping knife in here. And then I've got my fillet knife. And I also keep my strops, I keep sharpeners. I'm actually going to give this fillet knife a little stropping before we get into business. And if you guys uh, don't own a strop, highly, highly, highly recommend getting one. It is just a uh, excellent outdoor tool. It takes your knives to a whole nother level. And there's various different ones, but I, I get this one. I've got a couple of these. 
This one's made by uh, Knives, Knives Plus. It's a strop block. You can also make one yourself if you guys don't want to do that. Uh, I'll leave a link for this one. I've had it for a couple of years, and I haven't even had to replace the compound in it. It's just really, really good. I like the way the, the leather feels and the way they, um, they bake it. You actually bake it, like bake the compound in there. It just makes the whole process easier. So this will take the hair right off the skin of my arm. Uh, my left hand of my arm is is always like hairless because I'm always testing knives with it. So anyway, I always like to start with a small fish first because if you haven't cleaned fish in a while, it's it's probably been a few months for me since I've really started cleaning fish. Start with a small one. That way if you make a boo-boo, you can learn from those mistakes and not screw up on the big piece of meat, that succulent, juicy slab that you don't want to mess up. So just go in right behind that gill plate not too far for the electric fillet knife i go down i go straight across with it i flip it over and i just take it right off uh, with this knife it's a little bit dip more difficult so i'll go in from the top and i'll find that spine and run it down until i hit that rib cage and this is so much easier because i've put these fish on ice and then i'll uh i'll just kind of work the blade along that rib cage and if you have a really sharp knife, you just push it on through. And there you have a really nice filleted piece of fish. So uh, there's a little bit of redness on the white bass. I'm pretty sure it's on the hybrids too and stripers. I'm just going to cut this in half. And that makes the perfect fried piece right there. So if you're going to fry fish, which we're going to do, I'm just going to cut that in half just like that. There you go. If you start getting those like 15 to 18 inches, then I'll go into three slices. So if you're gonna fillet your fish, grab you a bowl, put some ice in it, and then stick your fillets right on top of the ice. And then I like to just put my scraps in uh, the cooler that has ice in it. And that way, if I don't wanna get rid of them right away, you know, obviously I'm not on the lake, I can't just like throw them back in the water. Since they're on ice, I can take them later, stick them out in the woods, put them in the trash. Whatever, you can wait till trash day. Just make sure you got ice on it, because if you don't, shoo, it can get nasty. Gosh, y'all, I've never filleted one of these. This is actually a mix of a white bass and a striper. And I believe there's two different kinds. There's like a, it's like a palmetto and a sunshine. I believe, I believe that's right. But if not, please correct me in the comments. So I'm interested to see how they taste and how much red is going to be in the meat. This looks like it is a female. It's going to have row. I'm going to show you guys in just a second. Oh, there we go. Holy cow. That was a big piece of meat. Look at that. That is a pork chop. A little bit of red on that other side. One, two, three, four, five pieces. Oh my gosh. So I'm actually getting 10 edible uh, fillets and these are like probably two bites right here. Look at that. It looks like there's a little tougher skin in there as well. Now a hybrid bass can't actually spawn on its own because it's engineered. This is a row sack right here. This huge, look at that. Look how big that is y'all. And I've actually heard these are really good to feed to the chickens. So I'm gonna keep, uh, keep these. I'm just gonna rinse it off and uh, we're good to go. It smells like fish a little bit. I enjoy it. It's the smell of success. Okay, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and serve our fish row to the chickens. Just straight up delicacy, high protein meal for these girls. I know you've never had this before, but I got a feeling you're gonna like it. Okay, here you go. Get after it. Oh yeah, oh, oh wow. They are tearing into that. That did not stay on the, oh wow. When they're running with it, I hardly ever see them do that when they're running with it. See, I put it on that nice thing so the leaves wouldn't get in it and y'all just take it right off, stick it in the leaves. They're absolutely going to town on that thing. The way we're gonna do these, some of y'all are familiar with if you've been here on this channel a while. It's the way we've done a lot of fish and it is freaking delicious that is 
all Frank's Red Hot or just take your favorite hot sauce, but I like this one because it is a, it's a wing sauce. It's got a little coating on it. No need for the eggs or the milk. You don't need to put any of that on there to get your stickiness before you go into your, in, into your, said that very strange. I apologize. Uh, Stephanie, what is this? What have you made here? Uh, I think it's two parts flour to one part cornmeal. Uh, Cosmo Q's salt, pepper, and garlic. Okay, we're a big fan of the uh, Cosmo SPG. Do you have any of that over here, babe? Yeah, right here, great seasoning for everything. We like to use it on fish. If you're not feeling like a fiery hot mood, but they also make some like wing dusts that are very good on fish as well. So we got our fish there on ice. We don't really want the water on there. That's gonna interrupt the coating. So I'm gonna take them out and kind of pat them dry with some paper towels. I know these are rare these days, but we managed to find some and we're gonna use them sparingly. So kind of pad dry our fish and then put them in that hot sauce. Look at that slab of meat right there. What, bam, I'm on a paper towel, fold it over, get that moisture off. What, bam, in the dry bowl. Simple as that. Take your Franks and you smother it on there. That was about mm, three quarters of a bottle right there. Now the fun part. Somebody's gotta get their hands in there and rub it on in. Ooh, let's take this wedding ring off. Ooh, wow, <laughs> can't really get it off. Okay. Dad had too many beers at the lake. Because oh. it's going to be delicious here in just a sec. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, cook the white bass first. Your first run in the grease is not the best. It's usually the second or your third uh, helping in the grease. It's better. I don't know. I, it's just science. Grease is hot. Grease should be hot. Let's put them in our batter here and then get them sizzling. I like to do this in all just, just, just a fail swoop. A fail swoop. Where'd that word come from? Fail swoop. I don't know, did you just make that up? No, I did not. That's an old school term. I know, Emmy. Golden Crispies are coming. Hang on there, girl. We're gonna put it in the grease. Stay back. It could be sizzly hot. Yes, it is. There we go. Ooh. Now you know how mama cooks every night. Yeah, you, you gotta have like strong arms to do this. Batter up. Wabam. We're doing a shallow grease pan today, but you can still tell when they're floating. When they're floating, they're done. Yep. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Right. Okay, your fingers tend to get pretty caked in this process. You're just gonna have to deal with that. Last one. <laughs> you smell that hot sauce? Last white bass piece going in. They're already turning golden yellow. It's definitely not summer. First crispy of the spring, though. Crappie is next. I did catch a couple while on this trip, and I let them go for some weird reason. Wow, this is literally three fish. I think that one hybrid would be enough for us, honestly. And it goes sizzle hot, wham bam, like a shrimp sandwich. Look at this funness right here. You get those just big old cake fingers. Looks like my fingertips are just dumplings. Mmm. We got on them flavors. Hmm. I feel like I taste the Franks much more than I used to. I kind of, I, li I like it. I taste it a lot. I taste a lot too. How Delicious. much? How much did you put on there? I put the whole daggum bottle. Ooh, going for seconds. That looks like a bit. <laughs> that looked like the best piece. Hmm. That's a thicker piece. Mm. It's gonna be hot. How hot? You know, it's fry. Uh huh. Mmm. Me, me. Fish is cooked perfectly. The hybrids are hot out of the grease. Steph has made a delicious looking side and some, some taters, some oven baked tater slice wedges. Mmm. So here is the big question. How does this taste? Is it gonna be more gamey than the white bass? I have a feeling it is going to be because there's like a little bit of a gray skin uh, associated with these bigger chunks. And you just look at the, look at the beef on there. It's just thicker. I probably would have even cut these up even more. The pull apart flakiness steam shot. Probably can't see the steam, but it is steamy. Looks like it's cooked pretty good. Oh, yeah, really hot. 
All I'm tasting is hot. Just hang on. Mmm. Okay, there it is. Mmm. Okay, there's the gaminess in there. And that Frank's really covers that up, y'all. I'm telling you. Especially on a fish like this. We have some bigger stripers, hybrids. I think that's the way to go. 100%. Just thick with two C's there. Wow. Walleye being a 10 and like mud cat being a 1. I'm going to put this at like 6.8. White bass like 7.5. So just below it. And I kind of suspected that just with it being meteor, uh, probably an older fish, and then having more of that gray skin in it. Mm. Not bad at all. Okay, Fish and Freaks, I'm gonna go in here and enjoy the rest of these Golden Krispies with the family, but I hope wherever you are, you are snatching them up and putting them in the freezer, or just putting them right in the grease and into your face. And if you've never fried fish, I highly suggest the recipe we use today. So give it a shot, you're gonna love it. Go ahead and smash that like button for utilizing resources out of the water. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. God bless you. See you soon.